so you know we open source like running event software, RFID key systems, <laughs> the, uh, automating paying membership dues, automating like all this stuff. Um, and there's a community online that's bringing that to other spaces now. Um, yeah. I'll take all the work I played out of it. Um, <laughs> Big, big push on that. So if we can make it easy for any community of people worldwide to go and create innovation spaces like Hacker Dojo, then I think we've, we've fulfilled our mission. Because yeah. it's kind of twofold. So one is to literally physically serve the, the people in this area and offer them a place where they can work together and build amazing things and have amazing ideas. And the other is to help pioneer what it's like to operate a space like this and to make it really easy for future people to come in and build spaces out of their communities all over the world. Mm. And some of those spaces may have a hacker dojo name, but like a lot of them won't. And that's right. that's right. That, that is the right thing because a space that's individually derived is going to have its own identity and its own its focus may change from ours. And that's good and natural. I mean, Hacker Dojo itself is part of a larger movement called the Hackerspaces Movement. And it's really unbelievable to see the kind of global traction that the Hackerspaces Movement has had. If you take a look back at 2000, there were maybe a dozen Hackerspaces operating globally. And today, there are hundreds of Hackerspaces that are, are open and, and getting up to the thousands that are in, in the process of opening. So the, the adoption curve is just this insane hawk stick that this is getting to be a global transformation in society I think ultimately it begins to amount to a rejection of the classical workspace as a productive place for a knowledge worker to, to do their work I mean the cubicle is a failed invention yeah I think and people are looking for ways to be better workers because it's more refreshing have more fun at their work and be able to apply themselves better and I think that the architecture that they surround themselves with, both in terms of the physical architecture of what kind of buildings, but also the social architecture of who am I around, uh, there's a recognition that that dramatically affects your, your personal productivity, your personal satisfaction, and your happiness. Sure. This is where a bunch of hardware stuff happens. That's a CNC. Um, there's a bunch of like resistors and stuff and they're all in labeled things and those are free um, but if you take a lot they encourage you to bring stuff back in there's uh, oscilloscopes and all sorts of multimeters and uh, I think there's like uh, logic um, analyzers and stuff safety goggles if you're a member, you can reserve these. If not, you can show up, and if they're empty, you can just go in there. There's some more monitors that you can hook up your stuff to. And um, that is a 3D printer, I believe, and so is this. Huh. Wow. And there... Oh, no, these two are 3D printers, and that's something else I forget about. <laughs> um, it's like, this one's for a ceramic, and this one's for something else. I don't know, something like that. Wow. It's during around 7 p.m., this will be, like have a lot of people. And then in, the, in that room, this 140B over here, they'll have like somebody up here uh, talking to everybody over here. And I'm told that's the world's largest koosh ball. <laughs> and then there's more, um, what are they called, offices, like those ones we saw back there. Mm -hmm. And this plane up here. Oh. Indeed, there is an airplane up there. Yeah.